Today we're going to talk about an exercise that's called rack pull. Okay, we've already shown you a video of the barbell shrug. Barbell shrug is the top part of a three-step uh, grouping of pulling exercises that are partial pulls. The two that are uh, really the most important are the rack pull and the halting deadlift. And the reason these things are used is to break the full range of motion deadlift up into two smaller pieces so that they are more easily recoverable from. Uh, once you get up into the mid 400s, low 400s or sets of five for deadlifts, uh, the deadlift itself becomes a lot less productive as an exercise because it's very, very hard to recover from that much work. The deadlift starts from a dead stop, thus the name. Uh, each rep is reset and not balanced if you're honestly doing deadlifts. And even though the range of motion is a lot shorter for a deadlift than it is for a squat, the uh, tendency of the body to respond without uh, to an exercise that does not include a stretch reflex is uh, it's just it's a harder thing to recover from. You're having to stop from a complete dead stop every time, set the bar down, reset, and pull. And you pull from the position of the worst leverage that you're going to have during the pull. Pull it all the way up to lockout, set it back down, and experience has just taught us that sets of five deadlifts are very, very stressful. So, Bill Starr came up with this idea, uh, taught it to me years ago, to break the deadlift up into actually four pieces. And the way uh, the training wa uh, worked was that we would use the rack pull one week and we'd alternate that with the halting deadlift the following week for the heavy pulling day. We pulled twice a week and the other two workouts alternated the barbell shrug, which you've already seen, with either power cleans or power snatches. And the combination of these four movements added up to deadlift strength. And the only time I would deadlift was at the warm-up room at the meet and this method took me to 633 pounds at 220, which is not a terribly great deadlift, but it was pretty good for someone of mediocre genetics like I've got. So the method does work. And the primary reason the method works is it, it avoids your overtraining the pull. So today we're going to talk about the rack pull part of this thing. The rack pull is done in a power rack like this. Now this rack we had made here, the plans of it uh, for it are available on our website at in the resources section. There's a PDF for this rack. The thing is 16 inches in the middle, and the holes are spaced at three inch centers. So it's quite easily adjustable. These pins are made out of inch and a quarter material, and they will not bend, okay? When we do a rack pull, or a barbell shrug for that matter, inside the rack, we always use a bar. We have two or three of them laying around in here, as do most gyms, that are already bent. This bar is a bar we use for rack pulls. It's bent, but it's not so bent that it looks like a rainbow. It will settle into a position once you settle it in the rack. The reason we use an already bent bar is because if the weight gets away from me when it, when it gets really heavy and you drop it on the pins, a straight bar will no longer be straight. So don't use a straight bar on this because it's too dangerous and hard on the equipment. Everybody's got a bent bar. So, we are going to set the bar at a position that's right at about my, just below the tibial tuberosity, the point at which my quadriceps tendon attaches to my knee. It's probably three or four inches below the top of the patella, as you can see right here. Now, the overlap with the halting deadlift comes when we pull the halting deadlift to the top of the patella. So these two exercises produce an overlap of about six inches in the middle of the pull so that nothing gets untrained. Now, both of these exercises, the halting deadlift and the rack pull, are going to be used a little bit differently than in terms of the form than the deadlift itself. When most people pull the deadlift off of the floor, the back angle, the angle made by the generalized plane of the torso and the floor, 
you'll notice people's back angle when you pull. Most people will start to change their back angle somewhere in the middle of the shin, possibly up toward the bottom of the tibial tuberosity. By the time the bar gets to the knee, the back angle has begun to change for the vast majority of all human beings that pull a barbell off the floor. We're going to modify both of these pulls a little bit uh, in order that we try to stay out over the bar a little bit longer than we would for a normal deadlift. The back angle I'm going to try to maintain on this exercise will be the constant back angle that I will pull the bar off the floor with until I get it above my knees. In other words, I'm going to try to keep my shoulders out in front of the bar a little bit longer than I would if I was just doing a regular deadlift off the floor when I wouldn't worry about what my back angles do. This is going to provide a lot more work for my low back, yet having to maintain that position isometrically through a longer portion of the pull. So when we do halting deadlifts, we're going to try to maintain that back angle all the way off the floor. This rack pull will start with that angle, and I'm going to try to maintain the back angle until I get up above my knees. In other words, my cue is going to be stay out over the bar as long as we can. Now I'm going to start with 135. We're going to position the camera to where you can see back angle. We'll take several shots so you can see how this looks. At first, I may not be able to maintain that constant back angle like I'm trying to do because the weight is light. As I get heavier, the tendency will be that I can maintain that better form with a little bit better resistance. What we want to avoid is, that, especially at heavy weights, will be the tendency that everyone will have to get into their quadriceps. We're going to try to essentially eliminate the knee extension aspect of this pull from this exercise. I'm going to approach the bar with essentially vertical shins and I'm going to try to keep them that way. The challenge will again will be to maintain that through the set so I'm going to have to make sure that as I reset for each one of the reps I retain my vertical shin position and get back in the same place I started on rep one. This is what it's going to look like at 135. I'm going to use a double overhand grip. My stance will be my standard pulling stance. Toes at about vertical jump width apart, heels rather at vertical jump width apart and toes pointed slightly out. The toe out position allows me to engage the external rotators and therefore my abductors a little bit during the pull, thus adding a little muscle mass to the movement. Now this is what 135 is going to look like. I'm going to take a double overhand grip, later on I'll strap, I'll do a set of five here. Grip is the same width grip I would do. Like any pull, the bar will never leave my leg all the way up. 
it has to stay in balance over the middle of the foot. The best way for uh, that to be ensured is that the bar stays on my leg all the way up from start position below the knee all the way up the thigh. Just like it would if it was coming off the floor, stay on my shin all the way up to the position I was going to carry it. That way it stays in balance right over the middle of the foot. So I'm going to do about three reps here. I'm not yet to the weight where I need to use a belt or straps or anything. We'll put those on here in a minute. And I'm going to start thinking about shooting the hips. And let's make sure that I don't shove the bar away from me. As with all other pulls, we're looking for a vertical bar path. Now the primary challenge is the weight gets heavy. It's going to be for me to keep my low back in complete, perfect extension. The primary purpose of this exercise, at least for me, is the training of lumbar strength to keep my ability to keep my low back flat under heavy load. The way I will miss a heavy deadlift is my lumbar will unlock and go round. I won't be able to finish the pull or I'll hurt myself before that actually happens. So I really, really need this exercise in order to keep my low back strong, and that's primarily what, what I'm doing. Since I'm in a position with my shoulders out in front of the bar, in what would be a higher point on my leg than I would normally pull, I'm also uh, pull that bar through with my shoulders out in front of it, but, uh, I would, I'm also asking my lats to do some extra work. The lats are what keep the bar stable underneath me as I pull the thing up. So I'm feeling my lats and triceps a little bit through this top part of this pull as well. We're going to go on up to 315, probably put a belt on for this, and uh, see how nicely I can hold my back flat for you. Okay, this is 315. I'm going to do this without straps. This is my superior grip strength. And again, we're just doing a double overhand grip for this, for this exercise. On rack pulls, the grip strength, and we'll talk about this more in the, in the next, uh, uh, when I go to 405 on this, grip strength is not what we're training here. Uh, we won't use an alternate grip on this. We want both shoulders in internal rotation so that there is symmetry uh, for the shoulders during this load. Uh, by the time you get to where you're doing up in the mid 400 for sets of five on the deadlift, your grip is not an issue anyway. So, see, uh, 315 is what I'm going to do here for a, a double and then we'll just decide on what goes on next. Uh, once again, struggle is going to be to get the low back nice and flat. This is the belt, the grip, the set I don't want the belt. challenges to set the low back. Uh, this will get harder with a heavier set. Now typically a set does not involve letting go of the bar. Uh, if we get up heavier than 405 tonight I might have to, might have to reset between each, uh, each rep. You however being young and virile will not need to do that. So make an allowance for my age if you will. Let's go to four and five. Okay, I'm going to do this last form I said here. I'm just going to do a single on this. And I always pyramid my warm-ups 
because I don't really need to practice on this. If you are just doing this for the first time, I would suggest that you do sets of five all the way up. But once you're familiar with the exercise, it'd be better to pyramid the warm-up so that the last warm-up is single, save all your gas for the work set. Okay, using straps this time because this is fairly heavy weight. The challenge, of course, again, is to keep the low back flat. why we want to use a bent bar on these. If rack pulls are appropriate for your level of training advancement, that's how they're done. Thanks. <laughs> 